So we need to not get too excited about the 120 hertz teaser that we had from John Carmack, the former CTO of Oculus when it was Oculus. Now, you know, not to put a, not to sort of put a downer on things, but we need to be a little bit realistic um, when it comes to our expectations here. 120 hertz would obviously be amazing, and that's what the Valve Index sort of runs at, um, unless you enable the 144 hertz, which is like an experimental mode. And, you know, the, the, the Quest 2 itself, natively running 120 hertz, is, is pretty much, you're just gonna have to ignore that idea, because it, it really just isn't possible. You know, except maybe, <clears throat> Perhaps in the home environment, you know, where you're, where you're not moving around and you're just static and all you're doing is, is looking, then perhaps it could run it then. But as far as games and actual virtual reality experiences go, we're never going to see that XR2 chip, you know, putting high graphic fidelity, 120 hertz games and experiences, you know, out of that headset. It just isn't possible. You know, when we think about what we're looking at so far, you know, out of the box that come with 72, we've now got 80 and 90 hertz available. And what we're going to see and what we're already seeing is that some of the older titles that were made for the Quest 1 with more basic graphics that have, you know, less detailed textures that use more foveated rendering, they're being converted to run in 90 hertz because they can, because they were designed to run on a much slower, I think it was a Snapdragon 835. Um, pro in fact, it's the same... CPU is what's in my phone here, this old Sony, so um, from like four years ago. So it's quite easy to convert those older titles to run at 90 hertz because you've got the horsepower there with the new XR2 chip to do it. But when new titles come out, making use of that extra horsepower from a graphic fidelity point of view, so higher resolution textures, less foveated rendering for an overall better experience, some of them we may even find still choose to use 72 or perhaps 80 hertz over 90 hertz because the sheer increase in resources needed to run those extra frames, it doesn't sound like a lot, does it? You think oh, 72 to 80, that's only eight frames a second. 72 to 90, that's only 18 frames a second. But 18 into 72 is between 20 and 25%. That's a big increase in, in frame draws you know, in refresh rate. It's not as small as it sounds from a technical point of view. And then when we look at 120 hertz, which is a further 30 hertz on top of the 90, so from 72 to 120, we're looking at almost 100% increase, probably somewhere in the region of 90%. That is massive. And there's just no way the Quest 2 can natively run anything with remotely good graphics at 120 hertz. Now obviously, you know, I'd love to be proved wrong in the year's time when developers have really got a handle on this XR2 chip and they really squeeze everything out of it. But I think we just gotta be realistic here. If we relate this to PC gaming and PC graphics cards, for example, it's just a good way to, to compare it. If you wanna go from a 60 hertz display to a 120 hertz display or 144 hertz display, you, and you want to double that frame rate, basically. Let's say you've got something like a, let's say like my 2080, for example, the non-TI, I've got an RTX 2080. And that will run most things at 60 hertz at 1440p. Games at 4K will still struggle to hit 60, to be honest, because that's a really high resolution. Um, so for me to be able to go from, say, 60 hertz, even some, even some 1080p stuff. Let's look at Rise of the Tomb Raider or Shadow of the Tomb Raider, whichever one is the most recent. I can't remember now. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. That's a very hard game to run. Um, I can run that 60 hertz, 60 FPS with my RTX 2080 at 1080p, maybe 1440p if I'm lucky. If I, and that's with an RTX 2080. If I want to double that frame rate, go from 60 to 120, the RTX 2080 hasn't got hope in hell, and nor has the 2080 Ti. You know, I would need to step up to something like a 3080 to have a chance at doubling that frame rate. And why is this relevant? Well, not only is it a good way to explain the sort of pressure that doubling your FPS or your, your refresh rate puts on a, on a graphics processor, which is you know what we're looking at with the Quest 2 here. If we want to go from 72 to 120, we're almost doubling it, 
the poor little chip's just not going to do it. Obviously, it would need to be much, much better. But from a PC VR point of view, if we want to connect our Quest 2s to our PCs via the link cable or via virtual desktop, we're already seeing that this is a very difficult headset to run, either through virtual desktop or Oculus Link. Um, it's just very demanding. The resolution of the Quest 2 is really high. And if you want to run it at that native resolution, you need to go into the Oculus software, turn the slider up, the rendering slider up to 1.7. Uh, and if you're not sure how that works, check one of my other videos, I'll explain how that works. But if we want to run it at the native resolution, what we're finding is most PC VR games, now I've tested everything from Star Wars Squadrons to Zero Caliber to Half-Life Alyx to Beat Saber, um, Asgard's Wrath, all those big titles that have good graphics. I mean, Beat Saber, the graphics are pretty simple. Um, but, you know, all the other ones have really quite good high-resolution textures and really good graphics. I'm only unable... I'm only unable? I'm only able to run those on medium and perhaps even low settings. And again, for the sim racing games, you know, Dirt Rally 2, uh, Assetto Corsa, everything's on medium to low. If I want to run even 80 hertz over Oculus Link or virtual desktop, because the, the resolution of that Quest 2 is really, really high, and it's rendered even higher to account for barrel distortion, higher than what you think it is. Um, again, check my other video for an explanation of that. But this is what we're talking about, you know, if, if we're already struggling to run PC VR games at 80 or 90 hertz, and we're on low to medium settings with an RTX 2080, if they were to unlock the ability to use 120 hertz, that's, let's go from 80 to 120 because it's an easy number to work with. That's a 50% increase in frames per second in refresh rate. That means our cards, our graphics cards, need to be able to chuck those frames out 50% faster. And again, just like in my illustration a minute ago about say, you know, running Tomb Raider at 60 hertz, no problem. If I wanted to run it at 120, my RTX 2080 just couldn't even keep up and I'd need something way, way better like a 3080. The same applies here for virtual reality over link or virtual desktop with our Quest 2s. If I'm already struggling, you know, and it isn't just me, we're all struggling to, um, you know, my PC's not got a problem, it's just how it is. If we're already struggling to run current generation virtual reality games at 80 or 90 hertz and having to use sort of low to medium settings and this is for the games with a high resolution graph and textures you know we're not talking beat saber or other simple games like super hot that have basically just almost black and white with very little detail we're talking about games that really look good if we're already struggling to do that at 80 hertz and then someone says yeah hey, i have another 50 percent frames and your poor graphics card just goes what <laughs> I haven't got 50% more to give. If you use something like Oculus Tray Tool to check your overhead and then MSI Afterburner on the PC, whip the head off and have a, headset have, off and have a look, you'll see your graphics card is already flat out, you know, at low to medium settings on those big titles that I just mentioned. There's no more overhead. There's nowhere to get another 50% increase in frame rate from, you know, another 40 FPS, number 40 hertz. It's just not there. So whilst the possibility of 120 hertz out of our Quest 2s is exciting from a technical point of view and I you know I love technical stuff it's what I'm all about I also know that I have to calm my expectations down and go hmm yes I love 120 hertz but the reality is I'm struggling to run 80 hertz or 90 hertz I'm just not going to be able to do it until of course I eventually perhaps get my hands on well I won't go 3080 the RAM's just not enough in a 3080 uh, 10 gigs just not enough going forwards when I eventually get a card, you know, the room in a 3080 Ti with 20 gig around, that would be a, a, good, a good option, but it's going to be expensive. But yeah, until I get something like that, and then hopefully I'll be able to run current stuff at 90 hertz with the graphics settings up at native resolution. But again, until I get a card, I won't really know. But yeah, I thought I'd just share my thoughts on the 120 hertz sort of possibility that may well be coming. And just dampen our enthusiasm just a touch you know not not wanting to piss on anyone's parades as such but we just need to go oh hold on a minute let's not run away of ourselves whilst it might be possible going forwards right now most of us haven't got the horsepower in our pcs to run 90 hertz on full fidelity let alone another 40 to 50 percent uh, on top of that so yeah i thought i'd just have a little natter about it bit of a waffle as i like to do maybe 
some of you find it interesting, maybe you don't. But as always, thanks for watching and take it easy.